Monday, the 6th of November. Uh, we'll call to order the special meeting of the select board uh, for an informational meeting on the uh, 2023 charter vote. And uh, the first item on the agenda is to approve the agenda. Do I have a motion? I move to approve the agenda as presented. Seconded. Move and second then. We do have a quorum of three. Uh, so, uh, any further discussion? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? All right, the right, agenda is approved. Uh, and the next item is information meeting uh, about the December 5th, uh, 2023 charter vote. And uh, this is the second such meeting. And uh, one earlier last Monday, uh, with uh, about 15 people attending, which is, you know, showed some, some interest, certainly. Um, and uh, Tom, at that meeting, you did a nice uh, summary. I was wondering if you would mind uh, sure. uh, hitting us again with uh, generally what uh, this is all about. Just going to pull it up. <laughs> yeah, this is. Oh, right. So we've got a lighter crowd tonight. I'm still going to give you the full presentation, like it or not. Uh, so before I get into it, um, some of the history. We first talked about the charter, the first meeting after town meeting day. Um, did not make it into the minutes, but I had notes where there was a brief conversation. Kane, in fact, raised it. Um, on April 3rd, um, I was directed by the select board to, to formally begin research and planning for a charter. Um, on April 17th, there was the first real presentation um, and discussion. Um, had another conversation in May, in a, or sorry, in May in a long meeting, and then uh, there was some, some charter work scheduled for the summer, which we hit the pause button briefly because of the flood, uh, but we took it up again um, in earnest in August, and here we are today. Um, <coughs> some town charters are really expansive, um, pages and pages, St. Albans, Montpelier, um, Barry had 30, 40 page charters. Um, in many cases, those charters just recite state law, which I never quite understood because the purpose of the charter is to vary from state law, so I never saw the point in, in repeating state law. Um, in the end, select board decided to keep the charter um, pretty short and simple and to focus on, on really two points. So the first is the manager's authority, um, and the language we came up with is shown above. Um, it's one particular issue that, that happened in the past year, and it's happened before, is that if there's a vacancy in the planning and zoning office that we have, uh, those positions have to be recommended to the select board by the planning commission. Um, it's a volunteer board. They don't necessarily have the time above and beyond their regular weekly meetings now to go through a long interview process. Um, it's especially awkward when it's the zoning person because that person really works with the development review board, not the planning commission. So you have a volunteer board involved in the hiring process of an employee that really doesn't even work for that board on a regular basis. So this essentially clears it up and gives that authority to the manager. Um, <coughs> it also retains some authority with the select board. Um, so department heads, uh, going to the, to the bottom bullet, the department heads that are hired have to be approved by the select board. Uh, it's, it's intentional language uh, there where the form of approval is not defined. So it's about the relationship between the manager and the select board. It could be that the manager wants to hire someone who's well known to the community and the select board says go for it. And it's informal. And it could be that it's a much more formal process, but it's up to the manager and the select board to work that out at the time and I think that makes sense. Um, doesn't pin us down to, to one model uh, per se. Um, the other sentence is about hiring and firing. Um, subjects of the manager's discretion are really based on current and past practice. Um, and you can go ahead and move on, Karen. Um, <coughs> the meat of the charter, I think, above and beyond that, is about the local options tax. 
Um, and the local option tax can actually be broken up into three questions. You can do a general retail sales tax, you can do the room and meals or the alcoholic beverages. Uh, we decided to pose it as one question here. Um, long list of towns already have these taxes in full. There's a, there's a shorter list of a few that just have a chunk of it, one or the other. Um, a couple people have asked if they think it puts us at some sort of advantage or disadvantage adding 1%, but the reality is all our competitors have this already. Uh, Stow, in fact, passed theirs just last year. So I don't think it puts our businesses at a disadvantage to have it. I think it puts our residents at a disadvantage to not have the revenue source. When they're paying it, effectively, everywhere else they go. And, and Waterbury is a tourist town. I don't have exact data to show what portion of this is paid by non-residents. Um, but I think we can all agree it's pretty darn substantial. Uh, you can go ahead and move on, Karen. <clears throat> so this just shows um, current rates and what adding on 1% uh, would do. I did get a question over the, uh, since the last uh, meeting about the uh, cannabis, and it does certainly apply to that. Uh, that's not what's in here, but that has its own set of tax rules and rates. Um, applies to everything that your retail sales tax applies to. It does not apply to motor vehicles, does not apply to groceries. Uh, generally doesn't apply to clothing. I believe there's some luxury items of clothing that it would apply for. Um, we do get the Airbnbs, the short-term rentals, um, and we do get it applied to internet purchases. I'm sorry, did you say it doesn't apply to cannabis? It does apply to cannabis. It does. And you can go, go ahead to the next slide, please. <coughs> So just to think about this, um, before I, th these are just the categories. Um, I've got 18 years of data here. Um, and quick question, and Skip might know this. Skip, how much do you think our tax rate has grown over the last 18 years? Not our rate, but our, our tax levy. I don't know. It's, it's been 5% on average. So three of these four categories are above that 5%. General retail is about four, just to give it a little, a little perspective. Um, but I like the fact that the town is tying some of its revenue future to some categories of growth that have exceeded our historical growth in taxes. That could help put some downward pressure on the rate. Now, the tax rate has grown less than 5% because our grand list also grows, usually about 1% a year. Just going a little further, um, taking those numbers and forecasting. So all I did was I took those numbers uh, for 2022, and I started forecasting in 2025, and I used half of the historical growth rate to be conservative. I chose 2025 because there's a process to getting local option tax passed. If the charter vote passes on December 5th, it goes to the legislature. The legislature has to approve it, the governor has to sign it the next session, and then it takes the tax department two full quarters to implement it and begin collecting it. So in reality, people would begin paying it January 1, 2025. We collect revenues that year. Um, but in total, the forecast is about $650,000 in 2025. If that were purely done to reduce taxes, that would be over eight cents on our rate. So pretty, pretty meaningful uh, from that perspective. <coughs> um, so for a home valued at 300 grand, that eight cents is about 250 bucks a year. I'm not promising eight cent, eight cents of tax reduction in two years. Um, I can get to some of the things we can spend this on later, uh, but the point is that that 5% historical growth in our tax levy, I think, is going to be tempered in a meaningful way, not for one year, but for the long term as a result of the local option tax. It will be tempered, and we'll also have a substantial budget for buying things, paying cash, um, that will help keep that rate a bit lower, the trajectory growth a bit lower for the long term. So just a little more, um, the select board did adopt a policy about how to spend the local option tax funds. They adopted a policy intentionally rather than putting it into the charter because if it's in the charter, it's law. 
So if there's any desire to pivot, the wall has to be changed and we're back in this room going through the same process. So four buckets were chosen. The first is payment of existing debt. Um, we've got our debt service for the town on an annual basis is about three quarters of a million dollars. Um, and most of that debt is here for the long term. So paying some of that down is an option. The second option is just paying cash for all or a portion of certain capital expenses. A great example is the fire chief. Um, at town meeting day, we'll be in front of you um, asking for a new truck uh, for a little under 400 grand. Um, with a local option tax, in theory, there's cash to buy that. Doesn't doesn't necessarily need to be borrowed. Um, economic development and community vitality. Um, a lot of examples that, that can fall within that bucket. Uh, I'll give you a simple one. I had a phone conversation today with someone who talked about the town substantially expanding um, downtown beautification. So that means things like a very, very expensive holiday lighting, uh, not just in Rusty Barker, but throughout the downtown. That means, hey, it's Halloween. All of our decorative lampposts should be decorated with corn stalks and things like that, and we should have a seasonal theme. That's probably 50 grand a year based on budgets from other towns. That's pretty substantial investment. Um, you know, you're, you're two-thirds of a, of, a, of a penny on the tax rate. Those conversations are really theoretical. Um, they can become a bit less theoretical with a revenue source like this. Um, and then other investments that can generate some long-term savings. Uh, a lot of examples there. Um, a great example is if you drive past, it's not a town, but if you drive past um, our waterworks, there's a big solar field. There's a long-term savings from that. Um, the town is looking at, in the next few years, some software updates. Um, Part of it is our accounting system is decades old, and, and that's a pretty substantial investment, that, but that's going to yield some long-term efficiencies. So there's sometimes options where they're costly up front, but they're going to generate a savings, and this is another potential to do it without, without having that one-year bump in the tax rate. <coughs> some of our challenges on the horizon, affordable housing. I'm glad to see that 51 South Main was ultimately approved. Uh, but that's still still a process to get that off the ground. There's still work to be done. Um, but there's still, my sense is, community desire to go above and beyond that, keep investing in affordable housing. Uh, paving. So our paving budget is 405000 I said to the Public Works Director this spring, I want you to spend every nickel. Don't go over, but spend every nickel. Um, but asphalt is, asphalt is up 40% over three years. Our paving budget is not level we've level funded it. So it'd be nice to, to bump that. I'd love to see a paving budget that six or seven hundred thousand dollars a year, two years from now. Uh, two fire engines, we've got two older older models. One of them the chief would like to uh, replace next year pending voter approval. The other one is not super long for this world. So two big capital expenses coming up. Um, never mind that the public works director generally wants to buy a new piece of equipment every year, whether it's an excavator or a plow truck, um, but, but F-550s these days, full chassis, the full package we need are about $150,000, so another meaningful expense. Um, and then policing. Our contract with the state police is about $400,000 a year. That contract expires June 30th. I've actually just last week uh, started the process to begin renegotiating that. Um, I think the state police really view this contract as a unique entity that works for us both, and I think they're really community-minded. But their costs have gone up over the past three years. There's, there's no arguing that. Um, so they're going to want some form of increase. Uh, never mind the fact that at some point there may be community demand to, to add to that, whether that's through the state police or through other service. Um, but the cost of policing is going up substantially. Uh, nationally, not just in Vermont, our costs are likely going to rise with that. Um, and then flood mitigation. There's a lot of grant funds out there that we're actually um, beginning to seek to, to pursue flood mitigation efforts. But sometimes you got to you got to do the work on your own. Sometimes 
to get certain grants, you've got to advance the funds on your own. You've got to pay for the engineers or the hydrologist uh, to make yourself more competitive, to show some local investment. And, and all those sort of professionals are not cheap. Um, and I think everyone will argue, will agree, there's continued work to be done there. That effort probably never ends. And we can go ahead, Karen. Oh, sorry. Um, so just some closing thoughts. <coughs> Looking ahead at 2025, um, assuming that $650,000, which I think is, is conservative intentionally. Um, so most of our debt is long term, but we've got some shorter term debt through local banks that we could pay off early. So if we paid that off early, spend about 250 on that, we save some interest. Um, that $250,000 is cumulative, so it's not in one year. But if we do that in one year, we have about a penny and a half on the tax rate. And then that carries through for the next years. We could buy that fire truck and not finance it over 10 or 20 years, but finance it over two. Um, save a lot of interest long term. In rough numbers, if we bond $370,000 over 20 years, 20 years at 25 grand a year, which is a half million dollars total. So there's $130,000 in interest. And that's at our superb borrowing rates, which are much lower than what you or I could borrow at. Um, interest rates for people buying homes, buying cars have skyrocketed. For the town, 20 year cash is still three and a half, four percent 4%. But nothing cheaper than paying it all fast. So if we did those two things, we would have a 2025 budget with a tax rate very similar to whatever happens in 2024. I'm not gonna guarantee you a no increase, but, but those two things would have a big impact. And there's still 200 grand left over. So those are just a couple examples of what could be done in 2025 when this could first kick in, assuming everything goes well. Um, and of course there's a year between now and then, so an awful lot could happen. But that's just <coughs> some examples as I see the world today. And that's all I have for the presentation. Happy to take any questions. All right, so thank you. Questions from the board? Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, and general public, any questions, comments? You got us, don't be shy. <laughs> That's why we're here. And voting for this is already open. Mm -hmm. And you can pick up your ballot here at the municipal office between 8 and 4.30. And then uh, on the 5th, of will right here in this room from 7 a.m. till 7 p.m. Correct. Yeah. <laughs> yes, you just wowed the audience. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> People's prayers. Well, very comprehensive. And this is now a good time to send you that. Yep, already good. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. All right. Um, well, uh, Skip, do you, do you want to wait until uh, 7 o'clock for the rest of your team to arrive? Um, we open up the yeah, meeting? hopefully they'll be here. <laughs> and I've got to print something for us anyways. All right. meeting, well, if we can adjourn this meeting, um, then we can open up the next one at 7 o'clock, and I could go get the card that I forgot at home. Make it back sure. to I move to resume the uh, select board meeting at 7 p.m. Okay, at which time we'll open the uh, joint meeting with the, the utility district. Yes. Uh, all in favor? Aye. 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 All right.